When you work in a place like this, you're really lucky. Once you've got used to it, it's a good business because it isn't seasonal and mourners are lavish spenders. We also have, of course, economy-sized dispatches, like, like in this case. The widow was a baroness, and one could not help but wonder why the baron did not draw a larger crowd. Just four rather reluctant mourners. Here in Bolzano, even when it comes to taking that last long, inevitable nap, you're still in luck. We have the most captivating resting place in all Italy. Look at it. Now, now that's what I call living. Amen. Madam, uh, excuse me for distracting you in this moment of sorrow, but uh, grief and graves are my daily bread, as you will understand. Still, I, I feel compelled to say, never, never in my entire career have I been privileged to witness such genuine grief, such, such deep sorrow for a loved one. I'm sorry, madam, I, I've never said this to anyone before, but Having observed genuine grief, please, let me say just this. Should you feel those lonely moments approaching, or if you should feel the need in the next crucial days of anything, anything at all, or if you should feel the oppression at these lonely moments, please, and again, I apologize for my intrusion at this most inappropriate moment. I am completely at your service. May I? Please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Aldo. Aldo Bondi. I appreciate your beautiful words and your extremely kind offer. But I'm quite sure I'll manage. It would comfort me, however, madam, if within the next few days I might take the liberty of inquiring personally whether madam really manages to manage. Thank you. Down with nine. Oh, that's not good enough, dear. I've got nine myself. I've got even less. There's that four, that three, Leaves me with two. There's a torn card. Oh, dear, what a pity. I'll go and get a new pack. Beatrice? <laughs> Look at that. He has no shoes on. Beatrice, who is that man in the next room? Oh, have I never told you about Aldo? But who is he? What is he doing in there? He's just taking a rest here between jobs. What jobs? Have you known him? Now, 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 one thing at a time. About a year and a half ago, when my beloved husband died and I stood at the grave, all of a sudden a complete stranger spoke to me. He told me how much he was moved by my sorrow, that he'd never seen such genuine grief in his entire career. He, uh, he buries people, you know. You mean he actually buries them? Well, what's wrong with that? Somebody's got to do it. Anyhow, he offered to share the lonely hours of the first difficult weeks with me whenever I felt the need. I don't know what would have become of me without him. Well, he's just a friend, you understand. Yeah, but a real friend. An angel. You don't say... It's the gospel truth. That's true. <laughs> This 
Especially for you, Mr. Bond. <laughs> I met him at the cemetery the day my poor Arturo was buried. My grief so overwhelmed this gentle soul that quite spontaneously he offered to share my lonely hours for a few weeks. So, well, he's hardly left me since. I don't know where I'd be without this jewel of a man. How neat and elegant he looks. Doesn't he? So, well, I gave him all Arturo's suits. A miracle what he's done with them. You remember Arturo weighed 224 pounds. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Bundy. Hello, hello. Good morning. Tell me, Rosalia, since when have you become a landlady? A landlady? I never read you know that, Mirella. The gentleman's my guest. Did I ever tell you about Mr. Bondi? You certainly didn't. Six months ago, when my beloved Benito died. My, how time flies. That's when I met Mr. Bondi. I think he was more concerned about Benito's passing away than I was. Don't let it shock you. He's a professional pallbearer. But, oh, what a gentleman. And such good company. He seems to have everything. Everything. A man's home is his castle. Be it something old, something new, something borrowed. It certainly was borrowed, most of it. My wise old mama taught me two fundamentals for success in life, kindness and thrift. Yes, persistent kindness had elevated me to the care and rent-free status of a permanent resident guest, and had also echoed warmth for the body and comfort for the feet. As for thrift, Grateful widows saw to it that I ate properly. Always a little left over to take home. Yes, I was grateful to the tender hearts of the widows who made this possible, but, but still my thoughts kept returning to the Baronessa. And one day... I'll be down in a minute. It was rather a lavish place. I couldn't see any servants. I couldn't hear any servants. Hmm. Obviously, no servants. How nice of you to have remembered me and to have come all the way out here. I hope Madame is over the worst. Thank you, yes. How thoughtful of you. Uh, uh, would you like a cup of coffee? Yes. I'll have to do it myself. You know, the servants are... Oh, right. no, no. <laughs> well. I was just wondering, how does a man like yourself get into your rather uh, lugubrious profession? Well, that really began when I was a child. 
Our family always craved the luxury of meat, but we could never afford it. Until rich old Uncle Carlo died, and then we had meat three times a week. Oh. Actually, it's, it's not lugubrious. Have you ever noticed how gently people treat each other when they meet between the rows of tranquil mounds and how mild and uh, subdued their voices are? In the face of death, people are at their best. Let me tell you, madam, and I think you will understand. When a man stands on the assembly line of death day in and day out, life becomes really glamorous. I uh, see what you mean. Don't oh, forgive me. I, I didn't come here to talk shop. My purpose of the visit today is in offering you any help whatsoever that I can, uh, even, uh, even domestic help. Oh, please, don't do that. The servants will be back tonight. Well, in, in case they don't come. You're so kind, so considerate. It's, uh, it's nothing. I suppose I should be going. Yes, if you must. Uh, but I could probably cancel whatever appointments oh, I Oh, I wouldn't think of it. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh... Bondi. Aldo Bondi. Um, Aldo. Mr. Bondi. Thank you. Uh, charming house. I'm glad you like it. Yes. Mr. Bondi. I just noticed your beautiful rose bushes need trimming. Yes, well, uh, my garden is on his vacation. Oh, it would be a pity to let them go. I have a free afternoon this coming Friday. It would be a great pleasure. I love working with the soil. Friday? Well, all right, if you really want to. Oh, it would be a great pleasure, madam. Thank you. Friday. <laughs> I not only replaced the long-departed gardener at the Baroness's, but found myself playing the role of a gentlewoman's gentleman. Apparently, the butler had also taken a prolonged vacation, and Madame was expecting guests for dinner. But there was nothing I wouldn't have done for this woman. Mr. Bondi! Mr. Bondi! Oh, there you are. Well, I like you much better in white. Seems to look all right, except maybe the sleeve. Fine. Now, would you put these flowers on that table? Yes, madam. Could you walk a bit faster, Mr. Bondi? This isn't a funeral, you know. Oh, I, I'm sorry, madam. The others go over there. Oh, and uh, be sure and keep the food on a low flame. Yes, madam. Madam, I just noticed that there are no after-dinner drinks for the ladies. They'll be only gentlemen. Uh -huh. Um, just one more thing. My last man's name was Gaston. I'm so used to Gaston. Would you mind? Gaston? <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't mind. Anything else, madam? No, that's all, Gaston. Gaston. Huh? Madam apologizes. This should be done shortly. Mm. Aren't you new here? Yes. Yes, I am. Uh, started today, as a matter of fact. Oh, yeah. well, thank you. Well, by the way, did you pay the priest for the services at the cemetery? Hell no, I thought you did. Me? Why? Isn't it enough that I got stuck with a mortuary bill? Look at that photograph. Look at him! 
The scoundrel with his five golden hours. Have I seen you before somewhere? Oh, quite possibly. I meet everybody. Um, sooner or later. Skunk. He looks as if he's saying, hello, suckers. Well, he certainly knew where to find them. Skunk. Crook. I can't stand that grin. Well, he's still grinning. <laughs> oh, that must be Gabrielli. Break it to him gently, will you? Right now, I couldn't stand another funeral. Hello, everybody. Hello, Gabriele. Oh, my dear fellow. Yeah. Good, now we're all here. Ah, oh, poor Roberto. Exactly how he always smiled. Is it true what I heard in Rome? A car accident? That is how they gave the story out. You mean it wasn't a car accident? Well, he drove over a mountain cliff, all right. That was the only direction left for him to go. If I'd been there, I'd have thrown a few rocks after him. Why would you have done that? But I, I, I don't understand. Oh, dear, you never understand anything, do you? Here's a list of names and figures. It was found on Roberto. Your name is on it. My name? That's why you were invited here tonight. Oh. Did Roberto ever tell you about the five-hour time difference between Rome and New York and what he could do with those five golden hours on the stock exchange? Ah, yes, yes. He let me on this out of friendship as a special favor. And you were his only investor? Of course. He even swore me to secrecy. How did you know about that? That's beside the point. It's been working perfectly. He doubled my money every three days. Where is your money? Well, isn't it? No, it isn't. By now, it's probably being sent out as crisp little dividend checks to the stockholders of the Lido Casino. Roberto? A gambler? Well, how did he work it? It's not enough that he lost it. Now he wants to know how. <laughs> <laughs> Raphael, explain it to the masochist, will you? Yes, come on, Gabriele. I still can't understand how Roberto could have done this to me. One baron to another. Never would have happened in the old days. Another drink, gentlemen? Yes, sir. thank you. You see, Gabriele, the secret is that you were not Roberto's only investor. Who else? Hmm? Ah. All his dearest friends, eh? Naturally, his friends always came first. Thank you. Now, with one million lira from each of us, he got five million in one day. And the two million that he paid you back next day for your one came out of our pockets. Now, tell me, after you got the two million, what happened? I was delighted. I mean, about the money. Oh, I asked him to reinvest it, but he refused. Exactly. Told you he couldn't be bothered with peanuts. And that made you feel small, didn't it? Like that? Uh, it's like we all did. So much so that I invested five times as much as I intended to invest in the first place. And after one little round of friendship and special favors, he was holding 110 million lira in his God rest his soul's dirty little fist. Fascinating. Ah, that's Roberto. But why did he have to cheat? Debts. More than 160 million lira. And he figured that by gambling with our money, he could pay off his debts and us. But everything just went... And that's when he went over the cliff. Oh, no. No. He told Sandra about his predicament. And she, nice girl that she is, gave him all her jewellery. But that went in the same way. Well, it was decent of Sandra to have given him all her jewellery. You see how it works. Three million, five million. Oh, excuse me, sir. I make that nine million. You see, if you take... You keep out of this. Wonderful accumulator, huh? Rattling clever. As matters now stand, you'll get back about uh, two million lira. But we've attached the house. Is that so? We've given Sandra six weeks to pay back the money, and if she can't, well, goes the house, everything in it. Oh, you do, do you? A woman without a house can still live in a hotel, but a woman without her jewellery, how does she pay for the room? Good evening, gentlemen. Don't you set her up in a little palace, eh? By golly, I would if I could. My dear Sandra, as always, charm. Dear Baroness, how nice. You look wonderful. Gabriele. Well, shall we? Yes, yes, yes. of course. <laughs> Gaston. Aldo. I'm still at the office. I'm sorry, I can't make it for dinner. 
Oh, well, things are piling up. <laughs> well, it's uh, quite a rush. We've got a lot of overtime. Uh, pneumonia weather, you know. Who's that? Well, oh, that. <laughs> well, uh, well, some of the fellows are back here having a sandwich. It's quite a mess. <laughs> yeah, so, well, a little laughter with your work doesn't hurt, does it? <laughs> We're only human, too, you know. Yes. Well, well I, I've got to get back on the job. Yes. Bye-bye. Uh, Delightful dinner, Sandra. So glad you enjoyed it. I'm terribly sorry about the house, but you do understand our position. Of course. Of course. Where is my hat? These beautiful hands are so bare. Thank you, Gabrielle. But they'll soon sparkle again. Good night. are the lonely moments until one adjusts oneself. How nice. Just what I needed. Rather a strenuous evening for Madame. How can I ever thank you? Uh, oh. Cigarette? No, thank you. I know that Madame isn't wearing her jewels uh, for obvious reasons. But may I say that Madame is certainly one of the few ladies who could do without them forever. Oh, yes, yes. Tears will help, Madame. It must have been it must have been comforting for Madame to be surrounded by old friends tonight. One almost felt that they too had been dealt a severe blow by the sudden departure of Madame's late husband. Madam needn't be upset. This roof shall stay over Madam's head. I beg your pardon? This roof, Madam, shall stay over your head. Mr. Bundy, I don't know what you're talking about. A butler hears a lot, Madam. He wasn't a bad man. Had he succeeded, everything would have been all right. Actually, it was a remarkable plan, and quite logical, too. When it's Monday in Rome, it's still Sunday in New York, and vice versa. He did it all for me. Who wouldn't, madam? Madam needn't worry. Here is a friend ready to help. Mr. Bondi, you're really quite wonderful. And I thank you. But I'm afraid you don't understand that the amount of money I have to raise within the next six weeks is... It is 60 million lira. <laughs> uh, madam, I wonder how a man in my profession might be able to help. Um, Actually, my occupation among the departed is uh, purely a labor of love. It's uh, more or less a hobby, made possible by a rather lively income derived from the activities of my three charming associates. That is, my three business associates. Oh, I should imagine that uh, six weeks would be enough time to liquidate some of our combined holdings so that Madame would be able to hold on to it. <laughs> Mr. Bondi. Yes? Will you come up a moment? In here, please. Please come in. Don't be nervous.
poor Roberto. He died here. Nothing left. Jewelry insured for 47 million lira, all gone. Trying to save the good name. The poor Roberto. Baronessa. Baronessa, I assure you this roof shall stay over your head. Thank you. Good night. Yes. you laugh. This roof shall stay over your head. Tomorrow I'm seeing my business associates. try it once more. Here. Imagine this is Rome, and this is New York, and this is the sun. Now, when the sun is over here, it's day. And when it's over here, it's... it's the other way around. This is the international date line. But how long have we had that? Martha, I, I'm not an historian. I'm just telling you what the man explained to me. Look at it this way, Martha. When it's Monday here, it's Sunday here. And when you wire money ahead of the sun, hmm, you already have an extra day's interest. That's why this man calls this his five golden hours. Five golden hours. That, how much did you invest, Aldo? Only 50,000 lira. Uh, I gave him the money day before yesterday, and today he gave me double my money back. How exciting. I think the moment you brought these gorgeous roses, I knew something wonderful had happened. Well, it was the greatest mm -hmm. joke of luck in my life, running into my friend. He's an old classmate. Mm -hmm. How often does he cable? Oh, just often enough to always keep one day ahead of the sun. At the end of the year, this way, he's gained 365 days. Oh, my goodness, he must be cabling from morning till night. Mm. Does he never sleep? He has lots of secretaries. Oh, yeah. I'm... Yeah, very late. Oh, no. Hmm? What's your friend's name? Oh, I, I promise not to tell. I, I gave my word of honor, and that's something I respect. I'm proud of you, Aldo. Uh, thank you. So, what are you going to do with all this money? Oh, reinvest it, of course. <laughs> all of it? How can I lose? There'll always be an earth, sun, international dateline, and those <laughs> five golden hours. Mm -hmm. oh, marvelous. So, uh, Aldo, so I was just wondering, um, could you add a little bit for me on this deal? <laughs> Please, Martha, I wouldn't let you get mixed up in a thing like this. Why, why, you might not be above board, you know. And besides, you have everything you need, you would. Oh, well, one, one can always do the little extra money. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Martha, no, I, I, Oh, please, no, Aldo, just a no, tiny no. bit. It would be so thrilling that you won't say no, will you? How can I? Oh, <laughs> Aldo! <laughs> Just a minute. <laughs> 
thousand from me, please, Aldo. Uh, one hundred thousand's enough. That's all? That's all. But when I get two hundred thousand back, you'll let me reinvest it with maybe another um, half million on top, won't you? But only then. It's wonderful the way you look after me. I'll take care of your money as, uh, as if it were my own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Goodbye, Martha. Melba, this is napping. <laughs> Here you are, 200,000. Uh, no, Beatrice, 100,000, another cent more. I won't let you do it. Oh, all right, then. Well, here they are, yours and mine. Stand or fall together. Oh, how exciting. <laughs> Isn't it, though? Mm -hmm. I must hurry. It's... Oh, it's late. Well, what? do be careful, Aldo. Well, I will. Your hair looks nice that way. Well, it's always this way. It always looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> Now, are, are you sure you understand? Perfectly. <laughs> I, I hope you would. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Drive carefully. Uh -huh. Always in a hurry. Business is business, Martha. If you want to make money, you have to hustle. Your favorite soup, Mr. Bondi. Thank you. <laughs> uh, have you heard from your friend yet? No, not a word. You don't think anything's gone wrong, do you? I mean, two days have already gone by. That's true. Well, didn't you get yours in two days? Uh, Martha, I, I told you there'd be certain risks. If we lose, we lose. We stand or fall together. Mm. Seems a pity, though, to lose a hundred thousand. Oh, no. You are wicked to frighten me so. Gosh, miracles really do happen. Just think, five hours get lost over the horizon and turn into crisp little Lyra Bill. Now, tuck it away and be happy. Couldn't I reinvest it? Hmm. Martha, I've had the same disappointment. What happened? Well, my friend doesn't want to bother with his small stuff. Oh, some cheese? No. You know, bookkeeping and that sort of thing. He deals only in units of millions, and his cable code works the same way. <laughs> well, it was good while it lasted. Uh, may I have this salt, please? What a shame. But uh, with a few million, I, I, I could reinvest it. Oh, I suppose so, but uh, I think you should start. Oh, I wouldn't worry again, Aldo. Now I've seen how it works. Please. <sighs> well, if you insist. I... <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> what lovely roses. You shouldn't. Uh, I just dropped by to see if Madame is all right. Everything's fine. Thank you very much. But won't you come in for a moment? Oh, I wish I could, but we're up with our necks and work. Oh, I think it's that bad. Oh, life is cruel, Madame. Uh, the chemist grabs the wrong bottle and a family of six <laughs> wiped out. So today we have seven funerals. I thought you said a family of six. The chemist. I must go now, but I've been working in Madden's behalf of my business associates, and very shortly, Madden will be on solid ground again. Mr. Bond. Please don't worry, and promise me that. Goodbye.
I can't remember when I've spent such a wonderful afternoon. You know, you're such good company, Alda. It has been a wonderful afternoon. Yes. It seems such a pity to cut it short. But I understand. Business is a business. Tell me one thing, Aldo. I've been meaning to ask you all afternoon. Oh, I haven't forgotten. I haven't forgotten. Your deadline is at noon tomorrow. Everything's all arranged. The contract is signed, and I'm to pick up the money at 9 in the morning. Unfortunately, I have an early dispatch, and uh, I'd like to take it to you personally, but I must ask you if you could collect it yourself at the office at 9.30. Of course. I don't mind. Oh, good. And don't be depressed by the general surroundings. Just keep thinking, in a couple of hours, this will all be mine again. I'll never forget your words. This roof shall stay over your head, madam. And you're keeping your promise. Uh, let's just be good friends for now. Everything is still so recent. You understand? Yes, of course. But I'll see you tomorrow. And, and be sure to bring a large bag. It's a great deal of money. See you tomorrow. with only a hundred thousand. fabulous. It's <laughs> absolutely useless. And it's fabulous. So how can I ever thank you? Oh, 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 don't thank me now. Wait till we've doubled it once more. I'd love to double it, but unfortunately, I must stop. Pardon? I'm a Capricorn. A, a what? A Capricorn. The, wait, I'll show you. I got a letter this morning from Mario, my astrologer. You remember, you met him at one of my musical soirees. That my analysis for the next four weeks. I am to touch nothing concerning money matters. And by all means, don't. What a shame. But Mario is always right. I must not go on with this thing. <laughs> well, if your astrologer says so, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's that, isn't it? I'm afraid so. Lucky me. I'm Pisces. <laughs> Lucky you. Um, of course, there are two ways of looking at everything. What do you mean? You're Capricorn. That's, that's indisputable. And it says here that Right now, you must not operate with your own money. But is it your own money you're operating with, Martha? Well, Aldo, of course it is. I, I, I beg to differ. I beg to differ. If, if I'm not mistaken, it's your late husband's money you're operating with. Oh, the Arturo's. Well, <laughs> yes, in a sense. And what was your beloved husband, Martha? He was a real estate broker. <laughs> Martha, please. Oh, the, oh, he, he, he was Taurus. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 who is it who actually turns this money over into this miraculous multiplication process? Is it is it I or is it you? <laughs> it is I, Aldo Bondi. <laughs> and and your 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 analysis says this is the month of the day of Pisces, <laughs> and, and I'm Pisces. It's logical, isn't it? Do you mind if I sleep on it? Yes, I do, Martha. I don't want you tossing at night, weighing the pros and cons. You need your rest. I I'm just thinking of your heart. 
Just forget it and be happy with what you've got. Good night, Martha. Sleep well. Good night, Aldo. Aldo? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Aldo! Uh, did, I, did I forget something? Pisces, and I mean, Aldo, forgive me for causing you so much trouble. I've decided to make it 20 million. <laughs> <laughs> Clever girl. <laughs> now, I'll be at the bank first thing in the morning, then I'll bring the money right over to you. Where will you be? At the office. Uh, but, 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 but no later than 9.15, because it must change hands by 9.30. She, they, 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 they won't take it any later. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll be there. <laughs> Still sleeping. Mm -hmm. She has a clear conscience. <laughs> uh, good night, Martha. Good night. for anything now, Martha. I've got to get on with this. But how are you going to deliver it then before 9.30? I'll uh, deliver it on the way. <laughs> on the way. Oh, let me see. Yes, goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Take care. Yes. Hello, Sandra. Hello, Aldo. How can I ever thank you? See you tonight at the villa, 8 o'clock. Dinner, of course. And thank you again, Aldo darling. It's you. Hello. Hello. She invited you to dinner, too. Too? Yes, she did. What's so funny? I'll spend an evening with the wife. Let me tell you, my friend, this is the most expensive dinner I never had. 20 million lire, and all this without the dessert. Yes. 
Yes, yes, I know. She's beautiful, she's gone, but you'll love her forever. She was irreplaceable. So is the money. Oh, this is the end. I'll hang myself. Why? It's clean and inexpensive. Oh, granted, but uh, have you thought of the consequences? I'll be dead. Yes, but uh, that solves exactly nothing. What, what can I do? Look, Rosalia, your lovely uh, landlady, walks into the room and finds you hanging from the rafters in the center of the room. And she turns white in the spot. Beatrice, the least solvent of the three, might recover from the shock, but uh, not from the loss of the money. And when poor Martha hears about it, <laughs> the stroke right away. So it's your duty to uh, preserve yourself. Here we go again. Now they'll find out what I've done. Not if you do them a good turn. On another one? The last one. An act of mercy. Huh? A little joy ride over the mountain roads. Of course, it has to be a precision job. Joy ride over the mountain roads. Precision job. How would I get them to go on the trip? Come on, now, use your imagination. We'll have the rehearsal. You'll be Aldo Bondi, and I will be your co-star. I am Martha. Now, you go outside the door and try to convince me to go on the trip. You're Martha. Come in. Martha, the money has arrived! <laughs> hey, boy. Look, that's not it at all. She's been pestering you for five days. She even suspects you. You should appear utterly disgusted. Oh, come on, try it again. Come in. Martha, the money has arrived. Oh, really, Aldo? Don't be cross with me. Please forgive me. Don't be annoyed with me. Forget it. Aldo, did you bring the money? I'm sorry, Martha. This time, the money's got to be picked up out of town. Belcito. And uh, you must accompany me. When do we leave? Tomorrow. You'll find it very pleasant. Two other very nice ladies will accompany us. What's wrong? Uh, how, how do I explain the other two ladies? Why don't you just say that your friend asked you to do a favor and bring him along? But you've got to warn Martha not to mention the real reason for the trip. With uh, Rosalia and uh, Beatrice, you can use the same procedure. Then the little pleasure trip, and as a last favor, be nice. Get them tipsy. Last lap more comfortable. Uh, the That's the very last. Definitely. Uh, <laughs> bottoms up again. One, two, three. Nothing much to worry about. <laughs> I've, uh, I've just got to check the universal joint. Universal? What? It, it'll only take a few seconds. Oh. Oh. 
Martha, Martha, I... I... Oh, no. Oh. Uh, no. No, thank you. Oh, come on. You look as though you're going to a funeral. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just thought that Melba should go for a walk. again, the joy and excitement so confused him, he didn't know what he was doing. It's all right. Nothing's happened. No, no, no. We're here. Something. Mm. Oh. Did you hit him that hard? Oh. Do you think he could have lost his mind? Oh. Huh? Oh, oh. Faint it again. Oh. Oh. Quickly, do something. Take his tie off or something. Oh. Oh. Look under the belt. Oh. Take off his shirt. Oh. better, Mr. Bondi. You could at least answer me. Will you excuse us, please, nurse? Yes, doctor. Mr. Bondi, there's a small matter I'd like to take up with you. Three ladies, your companions on this unfortunate trip, have contacted me separately, each requesting utmost discretion. They've asked me to open up your blacked-out mind in order to secure an address in Belcito, where certain funds are waiting to be collected by them. By the way, the one who hit you over the head, I think her name is Martha Rayner. Anyway, she appears to be most generous. She insists on meeting all your bills. Our method of prying open the mind might interest you, Mr. Bondi. It consists of frequent electric treatments, rather trying to the patient. Mm. 
Now, you know as well as I that even if I were to resort to a blowtorch, I'd never find that certain address up there. Because it was never there in the first place. Huh? You can trust me completely, Mr. Bondy. I'm not only a doctor who understands your plight and the human aspects of your predicament, I'm also a businessman. If you are willing to cooperate with me, you'll save yourself a great deal of discomfort and this establishment a very large electricity bill. Take your choice. The one thing you should understand, in my profession, I hate to be duped. Oh, no lunch for Mr. Bondy, nurse, no dinner, also no breakfast. He'll take his first treatment at 6 a.m. Very well, Doctor. I'm sorry, but you must have your treatment on an empty stomach. Oh, by the way, I've, uh, I've moved you in with Mr. Bing, a fellow patient. You'll find him a most congenial and entertaining roommate. Well, that's all, Mr. Bondi. Everything is up to you now. You will find it very pleasant here, Mr. Bondi. I celebrated my 10th anniversary last week. Oh, sorry you can't join me. You heard what the doctor said. Very nice man, you know. You can trust him implicitly. Really looks after his patients. Visits you every morning. Mainly, of course, in order to make sure that you're still here. <laughs> As you can see, Dr. Alfieri has excellent taste. Some of the patients don't want to leave even when they get well. And can you blame them? Once you've got used to dishes like that. Who wants to go home to a stew? Still hurting? You'll never get bored around here. There's the daily visit from Sheba, Queen of Queens, a most charming patient you merely rise and bow, and then regularly, once a year, you get a promotion in station. Last year, she made me the Raja of Grand Chipur. Ah, how delicious. What a shame you can't have any. I do hope, for your sake, that you're not a light sleeper. Uh, we have an ex-president of a large business concern who spent a lifetime barking at an army of employees. Uh, since coming here, he hasn't been able to shake the habit. Uh, now he does a remarkably true-to-nature job. Oh, by the way, do you play chess? I must admit there's one nice quality about you. You don't interrupt people. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm They take them off at night. That's how Dr. Alferi protects his investment. <laughs> there he goes, the Hound of the Baskervilles, formerly known as the President of Marchetti Limited. He's doing an excellent job, too. Since he's been barking around here, we haven't had a single attempt at burglary. <laughs> I, I work in the office from time to time. Occupational therapy, you know. Gives me a chance to check through the files and uh, overhear a word or two now and then. Great fun. Of course, in your case, I know from one look at you that your trouble was debts. I have the same disease myself. Debts with a criminal background. That's how I can diagnose it so easily. Cure? Well, you merely draw a curtain between yourself and your creditors. I know the material that this curtain is made of. You weave it yourself. Trade name, lunacy. I've been hiding behind it for ten years. Stop it! Do you want to drive me crazy? Now you're talking. You mustn't forget you've only been here a short time. I bet you can't keep it up. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Bondy. Good night, Mr. President. 
If you don't mind, Mr. Seven. Bondy, you're counting my sheep. anybody. It's awful. I can't stand this any longer. I'll have to go. I'll come with you. Aldo, do you hear me? I'm no longer interested in the money in Balsita. I only want you to get well. Aldo, listen, you, you, you can stay here as long as necessary. I, I've made all the arrangements with my lawyer, so you, you don't have to worry whatever happens. And, and, and I've left you 60 million lira in my will, just in case. Uh, well, I'll just cover everything, and, and I've even bequeathed Melba to you in case you should be lonely. You shouldn't have come here. Remember what your doctor said. It's too much for your heart. Yesterday a black and blue bump, today a mountain of gold. But don't start packing yet, she's still alive. One more wonder drug and you'll still be sitting around here 25 years from now. You heartless slut, you take it. <laughs> <laughs> Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, dear Aldo. Happy anniversary to you. What anniversary? It's a year ago today that you became insane and joined me here. A whole year. Yeah. And I haven't strangled you yet. <laughs> My dear Aldo, you know perfectly well that you couldn't harm anybody. Shall we continue? No choice. It's your move. Well, well, well. She finally got what she deserved. Who? They all get it in the end. What are you talking about? There's the end of one of the most distinguished collectors of our time. Since when did you start reading the art column? I'm reading the society column, but it should have been in the financial section. All she ever collected from five husbands and an enormous crowd of admirers will now have to pay for polo ponies and other bare necessities of life. She's met her match. He's the vacuum cleaner of the international smart set, female department. Um, how about you telling me about your experiences with her? Why, you snoop. No, 
Uh, my word of honor, I wasn't stooping. I, I merely looked in your drawer for some aspirin, and then I found those clippings on her. Incredible. I can see it all. Sandra's trophy room, and among all the other moose heads, there's one labeled Aldo Bondi. Assistant funeral director shot while grazing peacefully in Bolzano. Oh. <laughs> At last words were taken to Mr. Bond. <laughs> Poor Martha. Of all the luck, 60 million lira in your lap. Oh, please sit down. Mr. Bondi will be here in just a few minutes. Thank you. The reading of the will won't take long. Poor Martha. Why was she not permitted to live just two weeks longer to witness Mr. Bondi's miraculous recovery? Strange. From the moment he saw the little dog, he was a changed man. Your luggage, Mr. Bundy. Yeah, just these two. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? I was just wondering what would happen if Martha's lawyer gambled away all the money on the horses. Very funny. But that has happened. I knew a man who had a lawyer like that. Who was he? My last client. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in spite of everything, Bing, I like to part on a friendly note. Yes. Yeah. I want you to know that should the happy occasion arise, you're the one man I'd bury for nothing. Well, thank you. <laughs> this is the last will and testament of Martha Rayner, who has left a fortune of 60 million lire. Here is a photostat copy for you. I should like to draw your attention particularly to clause seven on page three. I'll read it for you, shall I? Only as long as Aldo Bondi remains a helpless and mentally disturbed patient in the care of Dr. Alfieri, will he be the sole beneficiary of 60 million lire. However, in the event of his complete recovery, it is my wish that the entire amount shall be bequeathed to the holy order of monks of Aquabella. And now, Mr. Bondi, being of sound mind, will you kindly sign this document, thereby releasing the bequest to the monastery of Aquabella? Correct date. Yes. wondered why I've assembled you here, it's because I'm displeased with your war efforts. As leader of the Grand Army, I say, an army travels on its stomach. I only wish all my men drank what Ulysses says Grant drinks. Go home, Yankee! I want those boys out of the trenches by Christmas! A Messerschmitt! <laughs> <laughs> Machine guns! Shake the Bismarck! Long live the Emperor! Don't send Melba to Alpha! Long Geronimo!
I'm sorry about that, gentlemen. Find an autograph you've got there. And I'll have to take the horrible news to the Father Superior. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. <laughs> well, well, well. The age of jet propulsion to Bolzano and back in three minutes flat. Why, you. You knew it all the time, didn't you? Uh, no, I didn't. I just guessed. It was my professional instinct, so I came down and listened. You creep. Why didn't you warn me? Because I like happy people. I want a happy Aldo, not a miserable, brooding lifetime companion. And anyway, don't take it so much to heart. Relax. After all, you owe me the happiest year of your life. Well, this is very funny. Just one big <laughs> after another. <laughs> Make up your mind, will you? Well, here we are again. I knew you wouldn't walk out of here without money. And with a dependent to boot. Your move with your Imperial Majesty. I'm leaving. What? Are you crazy? Do you know what you're doing? Giving up everything? Why, here you have security out there. It's a gamble. You're just fighting to keep your chess partner, Bing. I'm fighting for the fruits of my labor, and I think I can make a deal. After all, half a bequest is better than none. Oh, I see. You smart Alec. But how are you going to get out of here? I uh, still have my pass from this morning. You know, Bing, I'd still bury you for nothing. I would like to speak to the Father Superior. And whom should I announce? Aldo Bondi. I, I tried to telephone, but... Oh, no. We've never had a telephone. We've wanted one for years. It's quite a gadget, isn't it? Come in. If you just sit here, the Father Superior office is there. Hey! No, 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 no. You must wait here. Just a moment. Come in. Ah. Afternoon, Father. Welcome, Mr. Bondi. Thank you. Father, I... Please. <laughs> Your Father. stick, please. Thank you. I'm so glad to meet you, Mr. Bondi. Thank you. Won't you be seated? Quick, don't waste time. Excuse us. In just a few minutes, you will have our answer. That man, brother. That man is a monster. Yes, Father. Horrible. But with all due respect from a practical point of view, a monster who offers us one half of 60 million daily has some merit. In contrast with a man who threatens to live out his life as a lunatic of Dr. Alfieri is leaving us nothing. But that is blackmail, brother. Blackmail of the darkest sort. Well, of a sort. We cannot allow that man to get out of here, telling the world that he has succeeded in making us a party to such a diabolical scheme. It seems, Father, that day by day it becomes more difficult to reconcile financial matters with one's moral scruples. Oh. 
Ah, dear. There goes the new roof in the west wing. The repair work needed in the refectory. Yes, not to mention our leaky plumbing system and the cracked supporting arches in the main chapel. It's all right, Melba. Won't be long now. That man's got that stick again. Shh, quiet, brother, quiet. That blackmailer. No, one moment, Father, one moment. Is it really blackmail? You see, a blackmailer only takes from you. This one also gives. Thirty million nearly. Brother Geronimo, I'm surprised at you. This will require penance, heavy penance. Our answer to that monster is no. No. Goodbye, Fleming. Uh, Mr. Bondy, after careful reflection and deliberation, our answer is no. Oh, gentlemen, I'm deeply grieved we couldn't get together on this. Therefore, my humble apologies. And, needless to say, just in case, my address for years to come will be Dr. Alfieri's sanatorium. Goodbye, Father. We could have had all the poor children of the district for dinner. Christmas. Thank you, Father. Mr. Bundy. Yes? Your visitor has arrived, sir. Sharin. Checkmate. So good of you to come, Baronessa. If you please. Thank you. I received your letter, Mr. Beeney. Oh, yes, I'm afraid it was uh, somewhat inadequate. Uh, may I offer you my condolences on the loss of your fifth husband? Sixth. I'm so sorry. Won't you sit down? What did you wish to discuss? Uh, something concerning our mutual friend, Mr. Bondy. Oh. Uh, something of a financial nature. Oh. Something very interesting. Mm hmm Yes. Uh, now, should you wish to pursue the matter, I suggest that we split 50-50. Is that agreeable? 50-50? I'm listening. Very well. I don't know whether you are acquainted with the fact that some three months ago, uh, our mutual friend succeeded in obtaining a very considerable sum of money. women in town. Diamonds and buckets of money. Melba. <laughs> and then I found myself in debt. Yeah. Oh, before I forget. Here is all the money I owe you. Oh, oh how absolutely. Oh, that's wonderful. Marvelous. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And then what did oh. you do? Well, like anyone else, I wanted to get rid of my debts. Yes? How? Well, I, I didn't choose exactly an orthodox method. Instead of getting rid of my debts, I thought, why not get rid of my creditors? <laughs> Do you remember the trip to Belsito? Yes, of course. The accident? Well, I should say so. Who wouldn't? Well, there was no accident. Oh, now, Aldo. The car went one way and the creditors had gone the other. That's why you two ladies are here today. Oh, Aldo. You don't mean it. Well, I do. Oh, come <laughs> oh, on, now. You're such fun. You don't believe me. You're the sweetest liar in the world. They don't believe me. I do. I believe you. Excuse me. You have the nerve to come here. I must have been out of my mind. 
Why, you made me betray all my friends. I almost pushed those women off a cliff. And, and you went off and marry a polo player. Again? Yes. Not the... Uh... He fell off his horse. Marinette's Sandra. Darling. Huh? Won't you come in and stay a moment? Those only hours are approaching again. Grief and solitude make poor companions. You will stay, won't you? And the stay she did. And very thoroughly and permanently so. Well, well, well. Ha, 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 ha,